Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to be tying um, kind of a variant on a, a pheasant tail river pattern. I've got just a nice scud hook in the vise and a 332nd tungsten bead on the front. That's going to help us get down a little bit. We're going to start out with some chartreuse thread. We're going to get that started nicely on the hook here and this is just um, kind of my take on a on a tried and true pattern um, I just add a tiny little bit more chartreuse to it than what is usually there we're going to take this thread down around the bend of the hook here just like that and we're going to create a little bit of a bump back here and that bump is going to become our hot spot and one of the reasons I'm going over this a few times is because I'm tying on a black nickel hook um, which will dull that chartreuse color if you don't get enough wraps on top of it. So I'm really trying to make sure that I get a nice chartreuse uh, hot spot back here. So once I've got that kind of lump in place, let's go ahead and travel back up to behind the the bead here. This will be a little bit tapered so I do want to you know focus on getting a little bit of taper right at the beginning and then just continue to build that taper throughout as we tie this pattern. And we do that by making sure it's thicker up here goes down to a thinner profile towards the back. Once I get to about there I'm going to go ahead and we're going to reach for our first material. So I'm just going to use a small size of chartreuse wire here. You can see I've got it nice and neat and organized for myself. That's the story of my life um, when it comes to, and probably other of my tires. Uh, your wire can get out of control sometimes. I haven't put a band on it. Um, you can probably see the black band to try to keep this under control and you can see how effective I've been with that. I've got a rat's nest there, but it's still usable. I can still find an end. So I've got myself a piece of that chartreuse wire. And I'm going to go ahead and let that sink a little bit back into the bead here. And I'm just going to secure that right on our hook shank here. And I'm going to try to be a little bit more careful. I'm turning my, clock, my thread counterclockwise. That's going to help me flat it out a little bit. Because I don't want too much more bulk here at the back end of the, of the pattern here. So we'll go ahead and move back up just working on that taper a little bit and slight taper. We're not looking for an absolutely insane um, large taper here. And you can see I've ended with enough space to leave that nice little chartreuse hot spot there at the back. So this one's pretty hard to call a pheasant tail um, river pattern without actually including a pheasant tail feather. So I've got myself I always keep one of these handy because I use these a lot. Um, I've gone ahead and stripped out about six or seven strands of that uh, pheasant tail fiber. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to secure that to our hook. We'll just take a couple of thread wraps back here and then I'm just going to pull that material back. Not all the way back because I do want to use some of that to help me out with some of the tapering here. We're going to get that nice and secured right back to where we have our chartreuse wire starting. I'm just going to take that right up behind the bead here. This is really an easy, pretty darn easy fly to tie. Um, very effective and uh, that tungsten bead will help you get that drop down in the water column really really fastly. So fastly yeah that's not right but I just made up a word so take my whip finisher here and we'll whip finish right behind the bead here 
and then I'm just going to go ahead and cut that chartreuse thread off like that and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to a sheer 14 knot black thread so we're going to go ahead and get this started right behind the bead and take some wraps back I'm not too concerned about covering up every single bit of this chartreuse that's on the underneath uh, most of it's going to be covered up anyway so I'll go ahead and click clip off the tag end and then I'm just going to move this thread back to where we've got both our chartreuse wire and our pheasant tail in place. I'm going to check once more for taper because once I start moving that the fibers of that pheasant tail forward um, we won't have as much chance to make any adjustments to the the taper here. What I like to do with pheasant tail, um, and it took me a long time to learn it, is I'm going to take my thread back to about where that pheasant tail is located. Um, and then I'm just going to wrap forward um, on the back side of that thread. And what that does is it just helps me keep those uh, pheasant tail fibers from wanting to spread out too far. If you've ever tied with pheasant tail, and if my thread was clear up here, it has a tendency to separate and so by the time you get up to the very top of the hook behind the bead you have strands that are way far apart from one another so by putting the thread there each wrap I take it's just basically pushing that thread forward towards the eye of the hook but it's also serving to help us keep those fibers nice and close together. Well, we're going to take this right up behind the eye of the hook here. Make sure I've got all of those in place. Then I'm going to take my thread wrap over the top of that. I can secure that fairly tight here. So really it only takes a couple of thread wraps to get it to really locked down. Now it's up to you from here. Um, I don't have a lot of fibers there so I mean you can come in with your scissors and cut it off but every now and again I'll just grab my tweezers and I'm just going to pull each one of those off and that just helps me get a, a little bit cleaner um, ending of those fibers so I don't have as much of a butt end sticking up. And since I'm only tying with seven or so, it really doesn't take that long. But it does end up with a little bit of a cleaner head, and that's kind of what we're looking for here. So with that, let's go ahead and secure that down a little bit by taking a few thread wraps through it because I don't want to lose that. I don't need to take 40 or 50 wraps, I just want to take a few. Now I'm going to take my copper wire and I'm going to counter rib it, which means I'm going to rib this the opposite way that I did my pheasant tail fibers. So these wraps are running across those pheasant tail fibers and that will help make this fly a little bit more durable because um, these wire wraps are going to kind of hold this in place. And this chartreuse wire is just kind of a, an, a, a modification that I make on this particular pattern. Since it's got the nice chartreuse um, hot spot on the back, um, I decided to rib it with the chartreuse wire. And you can, you can do it with uh, copper. That's what I see most frequently is using copper wire. But I'm just going to go ahead and use chartreuse here. So I've got that up here right behind the eye. I'll take a couple of wraps over the top of it, another couple of wraps right behind the bead, and then we'll just go ahead and use our helicopter pulling some fr friction while we spin it. That will break it right off. So it's a good place for me to reposition my hook to try to get my eye of the hook more level. So I'm just gonna release on my vise and pivot it up. You can see now I've got a much more even parallel 
with the eye of the hook. From here, we're gonna switch over to some dubbing and I'm gonna use some olive green uh, awesome possum here. And just to give it a little bit of extra kick, I'm going to go ahead and go with some diamond bright. Um, and we're gonna go with a green brown that looks like that. So I'm gonna take that with my awesome possum together and then I am just gonna pull those apart a few times. That's going to align those fibers to make it easier to dub, but it's also going to um, do something that I can't quite remember at the moment. It'll actually line up those fibers uh, so that they're running kind of this way. That will help us get a nice good uh, dubbing rope here on the fly. And once I've got that kind of where I want, I'm going to go ahead and scoot this out so it's a little thicker at the back end and a little bit thinner at the front end. We'll go ahead and drop our thread down a little bit to give us some space to put this dubbing on. And I'm just going to finger dub this on. So we're going to get that nice green from the awesome possum but we're also going to get a little bit of that flash um, from the other dubbing. So I'm going to take a few wraps backwards. I'm going to keep tightening this dubbing as I uh, work on this. And we're going to want a, a decently pronounced thorax here. And that's getting pretty darn close to where I want that to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the rest of that material and get it released. I'm going to take a, a wrap or two just to make sure I've got this guy locked down. From there, I'm just going to come on in and we're going to trim out some of that excess, especially over the bead. So that's going to be my primary focus. We'll come in and do some trimming at the back end, but for right now, I want to focus on just right there behind the bead. So one final kind of helpful hint is I'm just going to grab a sewing pin. I'm going to grab my varnish, dip it into that pin. I'm going to take my thread here and I'm going to just drizzle just the smallest amount of that uh, varnish here on my thread. Just like that. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and take those last couple of wraps right behind the bead, nice and tight. And so that helps us just glue that right down without us trying to uh, force some, some glue down in between the, the dubbing and the bead. And with that, we'll go ahead and we'll whip finish this. So we'll grab our whip finisher and we'll just take a few turns with our whip finisher. and release that from our finisher. Back end of my web finisher is a cutting tool, so I'm just gonna come on in with that. And that will go ahead and release that for us. From there, I'm gonna put my lid back on my varnish because I have a, I'm a klutz and no, really, I mean, I'm a club, so I'm, I want to put a cap on it because otherwise I'm going to spill varnish all over my fly tying area here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab a, drubbing, a dubbing brush and I'm going to brush some of those fibers out. And I'm going to brush them out a lot more than what I need them to be. We'll circle back in and we'll clean up some of these longer pieces, but what that's going to do is give us a nice kind of a buggy look on the front here. And from there, I'm just gonna come on in, especially at the back end, I don't want too many of those long fibers, so I'm gonna get rid of some of those, as well as some around the bead that just get um, crazy um, in terms of their length. So this is just a great pattern. Um, fish as well, great tape trailer um, pattern focusing a little bit more on the chartreuse than normally, but grab yourself a hook, a bead, throw it in your vise, and have some fun.